Imagine that you're looking for a lost diamond on a beach. Every now and then, it seems that something flashes among the shimmering sea of sand. But it's just a piece of glass, and disappointment comes again. Why do you think I'm trying to create such strange imaginings in your head? Because this is how I'm trying to describe the feelings of astronomers when trying to capture alien signals. Scientists have been peering into the darkness through telescopes for years, but space has remained stubbornly silent, hiding its gloomy secrets among darting meteors. True, sometimes the silence is interrupted by rare signals of unknown origin. First, though, one must understand that there are many objects in the universe that can manifest themselves in one way or another, as blinding light, energetic pulsation, or radio bursts. It's about the latter, radio bursts, that we'd like to now discuss. What are these phenomena, and what sensation has recently shaken the scientific world? <sighs> This autumn, astronomers were astonished by unprecedented activity in space. Over a period of just a month and a half, more than 1,600 radio signals reached Earth, whereas earlier such news was at best numbered in the dozens. It got to the point where in just one hour, our earthly scanning devices recorded as many as 150 signals. Scientists were shocked by this, especially since fast radio bursts are considered the most inexplicable phenomenon in the universe. What are single radio impulses, and where do they come from? Fast radio bursts are quite new to scientists. They were first discovered in 2007. Like many phenomena in the field of astronomy, the discovery was made by accident. In this case, during data analysis of pulsars, the duration of the signal was only a few milliseconds, but the energy of the event that generated it is beyond description. It's equivalent to the amount of energy emitted by our star over several days, and all of this happened in a fraction of a second. To be frank, it's hard to believe it. Nevertheless, the fact remains, the radio signal was captured, so astronomers began to study it. It took a group of scientists as much as five years to check whether the burst of FRB 010724 really came from the depths of space and wasn't provoked, for example, by a regular old electrical appliance of some sort. So a detailed analysis showed that a radio burst with a duration of less than five milliseconds came from the bowels of the dwarf galaxy called the Small Magellanic Cloud. And the distance to the object that generated this signal was incredible, about 3 billion light years, or 1 gigaparsec. As no more signals were received, a group of scientists from the State Association of Scientific and Applied Research concluded that such phenomena are very rare in the universe. How wrong they were. To begin with, let's take a detour for a moment to study the obvious discrepancies between the duration of the signal and the energy that generated it. Doctor of Physical and Mathematical Sciences and Professor of the Russian Academy of Sciences Sergei Popov openly ridicules this paradox in his lectures, arguing that such radio signals cannot in any way be the result of alien life. And one must admit, from our point of view, it would be absolutely ludicrous to spend such a huge amount of energy to send just a single signal. Then the next question is, what exactly is capable of generating such powerful radio bursts? Answering this, it's worth recalling the words of the same Sergei Popov. We've already encountered a similar phenomenon regarding the study of gamma-ray bursts. 
In Soviet times, it was believed that this type of radiation was provoked exclusively by atomic bomb explosions, so spy satellites were regularly launched to record such bursts in order to warn the government of countries participating in the Cold War about the danger. As it turned out, chance again played a leading role here. Thanks to active monitoring of outer space, it was found that objects millions of times more powerful than any atomic bomb can act as sources of gamma-ray bursts, and these monsters are ridiculously far from our planet. The final insight came only after 30 years of scrupulous observations. At first, astronomers couldn't understand where dozens of powerful signals were coming from, whether their source is within the boundaries of the solar system or far beyond our galaxy. Of course, it provoked many people to see these waves as messages of alien civilizations. Films released in the 1990s, such as Contact, contributed to the prevailing mood. The heroine, Jodie Foster, captured a similar signal, indicating intelligent life in the universe. However, it wasn't a gamma ray burst, but a radio burst. Well, it seems they already knew something ahead of time. But this detour is taking too long already. As for gamma ray bursts, scientists later found out which phenomenon manifested itself in this way. It turned out to be a supernova explosion. But with radio bursts, things aren't so rosy. If you carefully look at the graph, which shows the first radio signal of unknown origin, we can conclude that its source is very far from the Earth. And the energy that caused this burst to come to life is equal to 10 billion solar luminosities in one millisecond. Another thing is interesting. How could such power fit in the radio range? For example, the similar gamma ray bursts are much easier to explain because they're present even on Earth during the detonation of nuclear bombs. And by the way, they almost never manifest themselves in the radio range. Of course, this did not help us get any closer to finding a solution to the mysterious bursts. Let's repeat, if this is an alien civilization, then it's extremely wasteful. So much energy was literally thrown into the wind. But as in any important case, there were small obstacles on the way to solving this puzzle that were confusing. What funny incident interfered with the astronomical investigation? The fact is that in the Australian Parks Observatory, located in New South Wales, inexplicable things were discovered. The instruments began to record similar radio signals with strange regularity. They were attributed to both aircraft in flight and lightning discharges. But the answer turned out to be more down to earth. It was an ordinary microwave oven, which was used by observatory staff. Hungry scientists sometimes opened the microwave door before it was finished cooking, and radio waves burst out and were subsequently captured by observatory equipment. When everything was finally cleared up, astronomers began to check the very first signal, FRB 010724, also known as the Lorimer Burst. But according to their detailed analysis, it still turned out to be genuine and not related to terrestrial radio devices. So, was the Lorimer surge the only one recorded so far? Of course not. In 2013, after a series of false reports, the sensors again delighted astrophysicists by picking up a few more short signals. After that, a conclusion was reached that, in fact, there are a lot of such bursts in the universe, perhaps several thousand events every day. But one question remained open. What generates these signals? Until recently, scientists could only determine the location where some bursts come from. In 2019, a single pulse with 
code number 180924 was caught, and it turned out that it came from a distant galaxy in the constellation of the Crane, which is located at a distance of 4 billion light years from us. But then, in 2020, for the first time, there was a discovery of a source that generated a monstrous burst, and it was a neutron star with an incredibly strong magnetic field located in the constellation Chanterelles in the Milky Way galaxy. At the moment, scientists have nothing to please the public. They're still not sure what provokes radio bursts of titanic power, and there's no single scientific hypothesis. But there are some interesting suggestions. First of all, it's worth mentioning the hypothesis of Avi Loeb, professor at the Center for Astrophysics. The scientist believes that radio bursts may be the result of the activity of some stars in our galaxy. An alternative view says that some exotic events outside of our galaxy are to blame. For example, collisions of neutron stars, the transformation of a super-heavy pulsar into a black hole, or the result of the activity of magnetars. But, as you can see, not a word about extraterrestrial civilizations. But one shouldn't think that during this time scientists haven't achieved anything. Now we have the opportunity to record signals from the same source and also catch radio bursts much more often. Very soon, things will get much more dynamic. The Chinese telescope FAST will help us with this as well as the CHIME radio telescope installed in British Columbia, one of the provinces of Canada. The latter is able to efficiently scan the sky detecting new radio bursts. As for the spherical telescope, located in the Chinese province of Guizhou, it will act not only as a signal catcher, but will also allow the study of the evolution of dark matter and distant galaxies, as well as solving other scientific problems. By the way, a few years ago, anyone could join the search for radio signals. What was needed for this? Just joining the SETI project, which used to let you catch radio bursts without leaving your home. This non-commercial platform was powered by the Boink program and used the computing power of home computers. Unfortunately, the project has been frozen since April of 2020, and SETI at Home has stopped sending tasks to its users. But there are several alternative options for searching for gravitational waves, as well as creating a three-dimensional model of stellar streams. Finally, it's worth noting that the hypotheses expressed by some of these scientists are questioned by other astronomers. For example, there are about three dozen magnetars in our galaxy, but for some reason the instruments have never recorded anything similar to fast radio bursts emanating from these sources. Anyway, it's definitely something to think about though, isn't it? Write your thoughts in the comments and let's discuss it. And of course, like and subscribe if you haven't done this already. Take a look at the screenshots that are now on the screen. These are statistics from YouTube. What does this mean? Notice, now 57% of viewers of this channel are watching without a subscription. Therefore, in order not to miss Hubble videos, you just need to click on the red button, which looks like this. It's below this video. The law of the universe is simple. Remember that. After all, each of your subscriptions is very important to me. The more viewers, the more often they watch and like, the faster a new mega-interesting video will come out.